Hello and welcome to the Roots Up Podcast. This is Riley Maletsky. I'm flying solo with you tonight as we're going to break down the U.S. Open Cup Round 1 action has finished. It's in the books and we have a lot to talk about. It's a very exciting round of action in the U.S. Open Cup. There's a lot of very cool storylines across the competition. And, we'll, and then at the end of the episode, we'll preview the Round 2 pairings where USL Championship sides come into play. In Round 1, we had USL League 1, which are competing in the Open Cup for the first time in history. And then, of course, we have the NPSL and USL League 2, formerly the PDL, who have automatic bids into the U.S. Open Cup. And then, like every year, what makes this competition special, we had open qualification teams, which compete in qualifiers to get entry into this tournament. There were some very, very interesting matchups. We're going to go through each of the scores and then break down the the storylines from there. So to start off, Virginia United traveled to the Richmond Kickers of USL League One, and the Kickers got a big 6-2 win over Virginia United. And it was just a dominant match. The Kickers haven't experienced much success this year in USL League One, dropping down from championship last year. But they did look dominant, and they look by far the better team. This is a matchup where you can easily, without knowing anything, know which side the championship side and which team was the amateur team. The atmosphere was kind of weird. We had the the grandstands that were condemned, um, the cameras pointing away from those, and 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 then you had the rest of the crowd was kind of dispersed. There wasn't much atmosphere there. It's kind of a weird game to watch on on TV. But all of these matches were broadcasted live on ESPN Plus, and it, it was a big upgrade from years past on YouTube TV. And then last year was weirdly broadcasted exclusively on the US soccer website so you couldn't um you you couldn't screen share to the um your your smart TV which was which was a big drawback going from YouTube but this year every match is streamed which is a big upgrade and then the cam work is much improved it's easy to access on ESPN plus the commentators are better they were a little spotty at times going from game to game some some commentators that you would scratch your head listening to, but overall the, the commentary was was a big upgrade as well. We had guys like Bobby Warshaw who commentated the Richmond Kickers match uh, along with another one this weekend broadcasting live from a studio. So it was cool to see MLS guys getting a chance to uh, broadcast lower division games. But our next game was the Villages SC out of USL League 2 playing Lakeland Tropics also out of USL League 2. This ended a 1-1 and then went to penalty kicks, which the Villages FC won 8-7, going to 11 round of penalty kicks. Very exciting match. Lakeland Tropics looked like the better team through 90 minutes and then all the way through stoppage time. Remember, in U.S. Open Cup action, they played two 15-minute halves in uh, after regulation is ended and then go to penalty kicks, but... I thought the the Lakeland Tropics deserved to win this game. The Villages SC kind of held on uh, late. They had some good counterattacks to relieve their defensive pressure, and then going the penalty kicks, um, just a very 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 solid outing from the Villages goalkeeper. He really held them in the game with some strong penalty penalty saves, but a fantastic atmosphere in Lakeland. The Tropics fans came out and supported very very well in this Open Cup matchup. And also, uh, some more Tuesday action. FC Motown traveled to New York Red Bulls U23s. They played at the site of the New York Red Bulls reserve team in USL Championship. And this game ended 4-4. It was a barn burner. Fantastic game for these two clubs. New York Red Bulls have never practiced before going into this game. A lot of new faces, guys not knowing each other. Um... Not a lot of chemistry between their players, and they came out and they balled out. They played great. FC Motown did not have their college players uh, eligible or ready for this match, so it, it was kind of difficult for FC Motown. They didn't have their D1 players. It's not a first team FC Motown team, but it was still a very exciting match. One of the best matches of the weekend. And then Red Bulls pull off a 3 5 1 in the PKs. FC Baltimore Christos, which is a combine of FC Baltimore 1857 and Christos FC, which of course made that magical U.S. Open Cup run. But uh, Christos, Baltimore fall 5-4 in penalty kicks. The match ended 1-1, and then 5-4 in penalty kicks to Westchester United um, out of USASA, USL um, Pennsylvania. And then Chattanooga Red Wolves 
the USL League League One side professional team lose three nil to South Georgia Tormenta two. The USL League League Two side reserve side of the USL League One championship team South Georgia Tormenta. That is huge, guys. That is huge. Last year we saw the Tormenta succeed and. USL League 2 because they're preparing to go to USL League 1 championship. They brought in the best players across the country to try out for their League 1 side, and they were dominant, went undefeated in the regular season. This year, the League 2 side is not the main focus point of the Tormenta organization. Darren Van Tassel is not pumping money into the USL League 2 side like he did last year. He's pumping money into the USL League 1 side, and still... South Georgia Tormenta get the win. And this is before USL League 2 action has even started. This is before USL League 2 team has even played a game. Tormenta have not played a game yet. They don't have their D1 players in. Their D1 players don't come in until next week. This is a shorthanded reserve side for USL League 2 absolutely demolishing the Chattanooga Red Wolves organization. That looks bad for the Red Wolves. That looks really bad. And it wasn't even a close match. Tormenta dominated to a 3-1 scoreline. And now, to be fair, the Red Wolves did not put the the number one starting lineup out. But it was still a team of professionals losing to an amateur side that has not practiced yet, doesn't have their best players yet. That was the crazy storyline for me in day one. Also, um... This was the only matchup where an amateur side beat a USL League 1 professional team in the first round, which you're expecting a lot of those that happen. But just the ball bounces in weird ways, and, and soccer can happen. Anything can happen in a, a one-game knockout tournament. Ford Madison of USL League 1 beat Barbarians SC 2-0, one of the oldest sides in um, this tournament, Barbarians SC got knocked out by Ford Madison. Dominant performance of Ford Madison. They've struggled this year in League One. It, it's you can't gloss over that. But they look good. Looked very good. They played in their new alternate jerseys as well. And then Brazos Valley, Brazos Valley Calvary SC out of USL League Two go down one nil to Laredo Heat SC out of the NPSL. Laredo Heat. Don't have their D1 players. That's just storyline for amateur teams not having their D1 players in yet. But Laredo just dominated this match. Brazos Valley sat back, sat back and, and bunkered in the entire match. And Laredo Heat just broke them apart. Only got one goal. They probably deserved two or three. This game is played at Texas A&M University. But I expect Laredo to go deep into this tournament. They have the team. They have the reputation. They have the, the prestige to go far. And since Miami FC lost and it knocked down the first round, which we'll get to later in this episode, I expect Laredo Heat to go the farthest for any amateur side in this tournament. El Far- Farlito and NPSL won 2-1 against Academia SC. And Academia SC had a phenomenal goal over the weekend in, in normal play. And we'll talk about that in our Roots Up episode next week. It was actually Roots Up Goal of the Week. But El Farlito uh, looked pretty solid. They've looked good so far in the N- NPSL season. And they carried the momentum into this Open Cup match. Solid win for El Farlito. Then FC Morehouse, Portland on the NPSL, lose 5-1 to Cal. Cal FC. Cal FC was a team that was going to go NASL. NASL broke up. They were going to go NISA. NISA, uh, we don't know what's happening with that. The, Cal FC, there was a lot of things that were going to happen, and they ended up in the UPSL, and it was uh, a, a good performance for UPSL side of Cal FC. They dominated FC Morehouse Portland, and we'll follow them. They're actually going to play, we'll talk about this later, they're going to play Eric Ronaldo's team, who used to coach them in NASL. They're going to play his team, Las Vegas Lights FC, next round. Las Vegas Lights are a USL championship side. Then FC Golden State Force, USL League 2, lost 2-0 to Orange County FC. That is not Orange County in USL championship. That's Orange County FC in the NPSL. Orange County FC had a fantastic year last year. They went very deep into the NPSL playoffs. Talented side. Um, 
And this year, it looks like they're doing the same thing. They're dominating out in the West Coast and NPSL. And they looked pretty solid against FC Golden State Force, which are an absolute unit. They are a a, a year-in, year-out team to be reckoned with in USL League 2. And that was a dominant performance. That says a lot about Orange County FC this year. Dayton Dutch Lions got a 2-1 win over Erie Commodores. This is the first May 8th game. This is a Wednesday game. And the Erie Commodores, the host of this match, Dayton Dutch Lions, did look dominant throughout. Um, Erie Commodores were just trying to relieve some of the pressure on the counterattack, and, and they actually got a goal late into the second half to equalize 1-1. Uh, just a poacher's goal, ball, through ball played forward, their striker makes a good play, uh, puts the ball between the legs of the goalkeeper. Uh, s- solid goal, and then after that, some momentum went to the Commodores. Commodores had some nice attacks. They had some uh, crosses in the box. Possession in the final third it looked solid. But at the end of the day, the Dutch Lions, former professional side, they get a gritty win. They had some unlucky chances in the box. It could have been 3-4-1. They had a ball played in the box. Went off the crossbar, and then the goalkeeper was out of position, and the Dayton Dutch Lions player just sends it over the crossbar. Not sure how I missed that. Then the Philadelphia Lone Star Fs. This is a controversial game. It ended 2-1. Reading United won the game. Lone Star had a man sent off. They're playing a the man down, and they equalized in the waning minutes of the match. But it's called offside. And looking back at it, we'll, we'll tweet it. We actually already tweeted out a picture of this, but clearly the Philadelphia Lone Star player of the NPSL was well onside. Awful call by the referee. The Lone Star are absolutely robbed and should have had this match going extra time and possibly penalty kicks after that. And. A resilient Lone Star team as they were down 2-0 most of the first half. And then the 77th minute, they pull a goal back. And they should have equalized late into the 89th minute. Then South Georgia Tormenta FC lost 1-0 to Greenville Triant. This is the USL League 1 side Tormenta, not the reserve side. And a very chippy match. There was a late into the game, the goalkeeper was about to be called... Uh, given a yellow card because for persistent time wasting, but Tormenta player got mad, picked the ball up, um, and he got clotheslined. He absolutely got clotheslined, put on his butt, and uh, a little scuffle inside the 18 yard box. No cards were shown, and then Greenville Triumph get a poacher's goal off an Aaron Walker corner kick to go up a goal and eventually win the match. Then the cup set of the round, Florida Soccer Soldiers out of the UPSL get a 2-1 win over NPSL side, former NASL side, Miami FC. This is a fully professional team. They're going into the Founders Cup this year. And Miami FC, they looked like the better team throughout this match. They did. They really did. You saw the talent level was way above the Florida Soccer Soldiers. But they also looked like a team that did not want to be there. A team that was not up to play UPSL team called the Soccer Soldiers, which is a stupid name. But the Soccer Soldiers, who have been very impressive in this UPSL season and are a very good squad, they are in tune, in form, very nice passes. They didn't sit back the entire game. Very impressive to see them go at Miami FC. Miami FC go up 1-0 and then slowly but surely uh, 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 excuse me, the Florida Soccer Soldiers go up 1-0. The Miami FC equalizes and then Florida Soccer Soldiers had an opportunity to have a penalty kick that was saved by the Miami FC keeper. Terrible take by the Soccer Soldiers player. And then the Soccer Soldiers get a um, get a goal late to send them over right before stoppage time. So, fantastic result by the Soccer Soldiers, and they beat out a team, Miami FC, that we thought was going to play an MLS side in the Open Cup this year. And then Black Rock FC at a USL League 2 played New York Cosmos B, and the Cosmos have been knocked out of Open Cup contention uh, year after year. They got unlucky, and the fans are frustrated. And in this match, Cosmos are the better team. We're expecting them to win. But it's 1-1 late in the game, 89th minute, corner kick. 
fantastic clearance off the off the, off the line for Black Rock FC, uh, and another corner kick comes up for the Cosmos. Cosmos are frustrated. They thought they had the go ahead goal there, and then last corner kick before the final whistle. Cosmos put in the back of the net to send them on to the next round. Great resilience by this Cosmos side. Fantastic goal by far the best finish of the tournament so far. The North Texas Riottos, we know them from last year where they went on to play the Houston Dynamo, and they had the controversial matchup with FC Wichita where FC Wichita's uh, players, passports, wallets, phones were stolen. Very weird situation, but they're going into Little Rock. Little Rock usually plays a Warhawk Memorial Stadium. They couldn't play that because it wasn't U.S. Open Cup regulations. So they're playing at a local college. Then because of the rain, not all their fans showed up. The game was pushed back later than what it was. Still a great atmosphere. The Red Watch um, did a good job of showing out. Little Rock dominated the entire game. But as we know, it's a, it's a one-game knockout. And Riotos get a goal late in the match, looked like a player was offside, but uh, they play through, go into extra time, Riotto's down a man, and they're still able to keep Little Rock off the scoreboard. There was a late strike uh, at the end of the match where a Little Rock player shoots from about 25 yards out, goalkeeper was off his line, had to make a beautiful save, then a uh, Little Rock player tries to play the ball back into the box, uh, chips it over the goalkeeper and a fantastic clearance off the line to keep the Riottos in the game. Then go into penalty kicks. Riottos win the match in penalties 4-2. Um, some poor uh, decisions by the Little Rock Rangers penalty kick takers. Uh, but the the story of the match is after the game, there were some allegations that the Riottos, the player that was sent off for a red card, Changed jerseys to try to sub back into the game was denied, then changed jerseys again and came into the game. Little Rock Rangers will not be challenging that, and that is something that you can go back, rewatch the match, see if you see something shady. It's hard to see on camera, so there, there's not enough evidence to to disqualify the Riottos, but very weird allegations there if they are true. Then Duluth FC and the NPSL play Des Moines Menace at a USL League 2. Des Moines Menace are a powerhouse in League 2. And the Menace get an early goal. They're, they're playing very well. The Duluth FC earn a obvious penalty kick where a player is making a run down the field off a counterattack. And he goes into the box, has a good opportunity to get a shot on goal. And then a Des Moines Menace center back comes over and just tackles him off the ball. Clear penalty. A uh, yellow card as well. Could have been a red card, in my opinion. Duluth FC slot home the the penalty kick, and they hold on for dear life as the Moines Menace throw everything they have at them. Uh, match goes in the penalty kicks. The Moines Menace walk away 3-1, and probably the worst penalty shoot I've ever seen in my life. Then FC Denver and Midland Odessa. FC Denver look solid, get a goal to show for it, go in at halftime. Up 1-0. The Midland Odessa get a goal. Equalize 1-1. And FC Denver puts it away late. A lot of late finishes in the second day. Some good soccer. And then AFC and Arbor and Lansing Ignite. Uh, Lansing Ignite striker Elman of 4 gets a brace. Gets two goals early on. This match was played at a local high school at 9.30 Eastern time. Because the field that Lansing Ignite usually plays on is a baseball field. It's converted into a soccer field. And... It couldn't hold up due to the due to the amount of rain that was in the area. So they go to a high school who had an event earlier that day. So they couldn't play until 9.30. Elman of four, former Asheville City SC player, gets a brace. And AFC and Arbor pull a goal back late in the game. But it was too little, too late. And then previewing the second round action... We have Charlotte Independents hosting Florida Shocker Soldiers. Charlotte Independents have struggled this year in USL Championship, and they, they've struggled attendance-wise as well. And it's going to be hard to get fans to come out to a Wednesday game against a team called the Florida Soccer Soldiers. Excuse me, a Tuesday game against a team called the Florida Soccer Soldiers. So I'm not going to expect the large crowd for this game. Uh, the Soldiers did look very solid. I, I think they're a team that has the capability to upset a... 
a championship side that's not going to take them as seriously than the Dayton Dutch Lions are going to Pittsburgh Riverhounds. This is, I'm putting this game on cups at alert. Dayton Dutch Lions are a very strong team. They're going to have their D1 players available. They're going to a Pittsburgh Riverhounds team who are vulnerable right now. They're on a bad streak uh, and, and play. And then Tampa Bay Rowdies are hosting the Villages FC, uh, SC, excuse me, on the USL League 2. This is going to be a free match to attend for everyone. It's hosted by the Rowdies. And the Villages, they, they were not the better team. I thought Lakeland played outplayed them. But in Tampa Bay Rowdies are, are a solid squad. I'm expecting Tampa Bay to go through without too much um, trouble. And the New York Cosmos B are playing Hartford Athletic. Hartford Athletic are one of the worst teams in USL Championship right now. I think the Cosmos B are, are a very, very good team. They could have scored a lot more than two goals in their first-round matchup. That's another game I have on Cup Set Alert. Nashville SC are playing South Georgia Tormenta to the reserve side. And after a dominant performance of, against another professional side, South Georgia Tormenta get an opportunity to knock off another uh, another um, professional side in USL Championship Team Nashville SC. And then the North Texas Rayados, they're taking on Oklahoma City Energy and back-to-back years. So we're going to see if the Rayados can ad- advance two years in a row against the Oklahoma City Energy. Tulsa Roughnecks are hosting Austin Bold FC. Austin Bold FC has a lot of former MPSL players on their roster, and this is a USL Championship versus USL Championship game. I'm expecting to see a lot of rotation from these championship sides. Um, Austin Bold have made it clear, though, that the Open Cup is their main focus this year. They want to go far in the Open Cup. I think it's going to do well for their brands. They have an MLS team coming in to their city. Then Laredo Heat who I think is the best amateur team this year, are playing San Antonio FC at a USL Championship in San Antonio. This is by far one of the best matchups. It's 8.30 May 14th. Make sure you tune in. Cal FC are playing Las Vegas Lights at 10.30 game at Cashman Field in Las Vegas. And again, this is the Eric Ronalda matchup. Eric Ronalda used to coach Cal FC. He brought a lot of his players from Cal FC to his Las Vegas Lights team. There's a lot of fun storylines to dive into between these two clubs, one of the most fascinating matchups. Then Fresno FC and El Farlito are going to square off on May 15th at 5.30 Eastern time, an early game, and that's going to be 3.30 local time. And and this match is going to be hosted by El Farlito, so some weird scheduling there. I'm not sure what it's going to look like attendance-wise. But a matchup to watch unless El Farlito have slowly but surely and kind of quietly been very successful in NPSL in their second season. Lansing Ignite, USL League One team are going to Indy 11. This is a tough matchup for Lansing Ignite. They're a solid team, but Indy 11 have looked very, very good recently. They, they've kind of hit the ground running right now and, and have caught their stride, so... I'm expecting Indy 11 to pull through. Then Richmond Kickers, another USL League One team, are playing North Carolina FC in North Carolina. And I expect uh, North Carolina to beat their former USL championship team, uh, Richmond Kickers, pretty handedly in this match. Then Reading United travels to Louisville, Kentucky to play Louisville FC back-to-back defending USL champions. I don't see Louisville having any problems in this matchup. And then Charleston Battery and Greenville, a very intriguing match as Greenville Triumph gets to host their in-state USL championship team, the Battery. This is a fun match if you have a USL League One team hosting an in-state championship team. So I expect a phenomenal atmosphere. And this is a really special occasion for the the Triumph fans. And hopefully a, a cool rivalry is sparked here. In, in this matchup, and actually Greenville FC, the NPSL team in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, played the battery in a preseason tune-up and beat them 2-0. So another Greenville team gets their shot at the battery this season in real competition this time. Then Memphis 901 FC have one of the weirdest matchups as New York Red Bulls are traveling all the way down. So the region format's kind of thrown out the window here, and, and Memphis are getting a New York Red Bulls U23 side, and, and because of the travel and because of the U23s, Red Bulls not really 
practicing or, or knowing who's on their team or having that chemistry, I think the, the championship side that practices with each other week in and week out and their professionals are going to go about their business and handily win this match. Then Birmingham Legion, they have not won yet on their home soil. They're playing a Westchester United SC, and this is a great opportunity for Birmingham Legion to get their first win at home for their home fans. Uh, this is kind of a gift to Legion, though, because they, they've only scored one goal at home this year. Their home field advantage has, has been a disadvantage this season as the Legion have played very poorly at home, but surprisingly well on the road. And then Des Moines Menace, another strong amateur team, USL League 2, are playing St. Louis FC in Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines Menace gets a host USL championship side, so this is one of the better attended teams in USL League 2, so I'm expecting a very fun atmosphere as a cha- as a championship professional team is coming to Des Moines, Iowa. Then Ford Madison have the longest road trip of the second round as they're traveling all the way down from the top of uh, America to the bottom near Mexico and El Paso, Texas. Very weird, weird um, pairing there as they're playing the El Paso Locomotive, a first-year USL championship side. Then FC Denver. They're going to Colorado Springs, Colorado. So an in-state match against the Switchbacks, the Colorado Springs Switchbacks. Another fun in-state match for Denver, two teams that are very familiar with each other. The New Mexico United, the surprisingly very well-attended USL championship side, are playing Phoenix Rising, so a championship v. championship matchup. And then our last championship v. championship matchup, we have Reno... 1868 FC are taking on Sacramento Republic in Sacramento, California at 10.30 on May 15th. Nothing too intriguing there about that matchup. And then the final matchup of round two, Orange County FC and the NPSL are playing Orange County SC and USL Championship. So we have a, a matchup here which is a death wish for commentators. You have two Orange County teams, one FC, one SC, at two different levels. Nonetheless, it's going to be a really cool match uh, to see the, the, these two teams with very similar names uh, just a few miles apart from each other get, get to take each other on. And just from, from that storyline, it's going to be a fun matchup. But also, Orange County FC have been very dominant in NPSL, so I think it's going to be a good match on the field, not just semantics. Looking forward to all the exciting action, and, and we'll talk more about these games as we go. But I do want to mention some of the really cool goals that we, we saw this week where El Farlito, NPSL side, they had a sports center uh, top 10 uh, goal of the, of, of, of the week in their Open Cup matchup against Academia SC. And Lorenzo Frides has a bicycle kick that he broke his hand on. Uh, so very impressive there for El Farlito. And then Des Moines Menace had a, a, a great volley first touch, top left corner. That was a solid goal. New York Cosmos goal in the 90th minute to win the match was phenomenal as well. So some very good goals uh, in the first round of the U.S. Open Cup. It's been an exciting round. There are a lot of matches with the penalty kicks. Four matches went to penalty kicks, so lots of exciting action, and hopefully round two will live up to the excitement of round one. Signing off from this episode, I'm William Letsky. Make sure you're following the podcast at Roots Up Pod on Twitter, and myself at Riley Maletsky. Next week, we'll talk about all of the USL League Two and NPSL matchups from the weekend, previewing the next week of NPSL and USL League Two. Also, talk about all the lower division storylines. And then next week, after the Open Cup matches, I'll be back hopefully with more part of the Roots Up crew, and we'll break down all the U.S. Open Cup storylines, scores, and preview the third round of the U.S. Open Cup. And then remember, in the fourth round, MLS teams come in, so it's going to start to get interesting. This is our weekly episode of the U.S. Open Cup Breakdown. Once again, I'm Ryan Lewis, keeping the roots up. Good night.